Hello, Nita. What is this? Well, this is the VCNL 4020, which is a proximity and light sensor. And this is one of the sensors that I had ChatGPT write a driver for me with my assistance. And, um, you know, I had it write all the functions. I checked them. I verified all the, you know, pound defines and the code that yeah. was written. And then this is the Arduino sketch I asked it to write to plot um, proximity data. So if you back up a little bit, you can see as I move my hand up and down. Here, maybe I'll move my hand up here. You can see it. My hand goes Yeah, up and when down. we do any type of driver, we, we check it anyways. Yeah. So, you know, the trolls online are like, ah, just, did, you know, it's not going to work or anything. It's, well, we look, Yeah. We, we review everything anyways. Yeah, so this is the library. And I post the link to the chat where I do we're, the um, yeah, coding together. The with only the ones robot. that are going to probably end up doing that. So but whatever whatever we do with AI, we're going to yeah. post the complete logs. All right, so this is done. And uh, it's going to be native for chop soon. Yes. Make robot friend. All right, lady, what is this? This is a demo for my INA3221. This is a triple DC voltage and current sensor. It's kind of a cool chip. Uh, people who know the INA219, which we love using, or uh, the analog version, the INA169. This is like the INA219, but it does three channels, uh, which is why there's three terminal blocks. And here I've just wired them all up to, uh, you know, VN, five volts and ground. And this is one of the drivers that, it, um, you know, again, I had written by uh, ChatGPT together. So, you know, uh, it was a team effort. I kind of told uh, ChatGPT4 what I wanted to write. And then um, it went through and wrote all the functions for me and the enums and defines. And there were a couple of typos. Like, it's not perfect, but um, I cleaned up the library, even did the documentation for me, which I love. Um, yeah. You know, docs. Well, this is based on your code yeah. that's already out there. So, and I uploaded know. the data sheet, so it was yeah. using the data sheet to um, uh, determine the um, flags. But for example, like here, it actually didn't catch all the flags, so I had to g paste the table for it and be like, "Hey, you, you missed, you know, the second part of the table or something." So we do a mm. QA and we check it, and you know, yeah, it makes mistakes. Page up, just and like, just like I do, you know, many of us. Um, and we're working by prompt. So like my initial prompt now is much longer because I give it like a lot more context and I say like, hey, you know, by the way, like I don't need you to like do a flowery description of all the process. Just give me the code. Um, and so I got it actually got a little faster, although it did still kind of like to give me um, some description and text, but less than it used to. So that was kind of nice. Um, so this was very fast and easy and I kind of did it in between taking care of the baby and stuff today. Um, so yeah. I'm going to keep testing all the functions, but so far so good. This is a good partnership. Me and a friendly robot. <laughs> Early data, what is this? That's no moon. That's a round TFT display yeah. hooked up to an ESP32 S3 room here. This is Rev B of my experimenter board. Uh, as you can see, I fixed up all the traces, so I'm only using traces we can use. And I've added a GPIO expander here. And one thing I'm testing right now is this is a Wi-Fi chip. It can do Wi-Fi and RGB display. So I'm using some code that Paint Your Dragon wrote um, on yeah. my screen that connects to a geolocation service here that will look up my IP address and give me my latitude and longitude. So I don't have to like enter it in by hand. And then it checks out this API that will give me the moon phase. Um, what I love about Python is you just put in the URL and then you just get the JSON, you know, traverse the JSON X path and boom, you get the phase. And then the next step is I'm going to generate 30 phase images so that the moon phase shown on the display matches the correct moon phase for my location. Right now, I'm just faking it. But, um, you know, what's really nice about CircuitPython is that, you know, on the disk drive itself, I just have this image and it's like ready to go and I don't have to like play with little FS or any weird compression. It's just a bitmap. Um, I might try having it display JPEG images so I can fit all of them on the internal memory. But uh, I could also easily uh, wire up an SD card using the extra pins down here. Yeah. There's the extra pins. And that's the moon. Early data, what is this? This is an HUSB 238 breakout board. This is an interesting chip here. It can either set the power delivery voltage from USB-C using jumpers, 
uh, for current and voltage over here, or I can do it over I squared C. So I've written a little driver that's running on the Metro Mini, and what it's doing is it's iterating on every voltage available, so 12 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts, and then back down to 5 volts. And on the other side of the USB-C cable is this you know, nice power adapter. And this is the one that can provide 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20. So on the computer, I've got a little driver that I wrote um, it's testing out each voltage and it can communicate and see like what are available and how much current is available. Um, so this driver is working really well. And this is really nice because not only can you use jumpers if you want to like hard code it, but if you want to dynamically change the voltages, you can use this Arduino driver. So coming to the Adafruit shop soon.